He so, is? Uh, Kidding. Crazy, I know. <laughs> Kidding. So I would be surprised if Jackal wants to practice his secondary in any matchup where he knows he would just go Wolf. And if the Wolf is ready for the Game & Watch, then we could see that ride it out in here at Fusion number 190. Can't wait to see it, honestly. It's been a been a solid top eight thus far, and it's it? only it's only ten. Yeah, we're, we're I'll get home before it. one a.m. This is so exciting. Blasphemous! It was a good bracket today. It was too. A there good was bracket. like thirty, almost forty people in bracket. Woo! School starting back up too. So forty oh, yeah. people with school starting back up is pretty good. Hey, I get what I want. Ooh! Uh, now I get to yap. Talk Commentary up. yapper here. There's, oh my god. <laughs> I like how both competitors are also in high spirits. Once again, go to your locals. You get the good vibes Ooh. here. We're going to be starting it out. Grand final set one. Jackal versus Marcus here. It is going to be the Pokemon trainer versus the Mr. Game & Watch here. I'm excited to see how this one's going to go once again, because I know this character like the back of my hand. But I want to see the differences uh, that Jackal, where he prefers to kind of lean, right? A lot of Pokemon trainers, they have their favorite Pokemon out of the three, right? Uh, Quit has Ivysaur. Uh, Beast has Zard. Is Jackal's favorite Pokemon the, the Squirtle? We'll find out but if i know one thing for certain if we're gonna box we definitely want to be boxing with squirtle yeah and playing the grounded game as squirtle can be equally as effective you have so many solid pokes with that forward tilt uh, down tilt as well can be decently long range but if you get popped up into the sky once and you start to feel the common weakness between all three of those pokemon which is that the airspeed just leaves a little bit to be desired compared to a character like Game & Watch who can just fly around in midair. It's so funny to see the wolf tendencies translate to a different character from, from Jackal. I feel like I'm watching like a very passive Pokemon trainer, right? We saw him just kind of wait, right? And this is what he does with Wolf as well, where he just kind of waits for the opponent to strike, throws out that single laser, like he's throwing out the single razor leaf here. Look at the back throw though, trying to read with the Vine Whip and unable to find anything. So now once again, we're approaching, but we're approaching very carefully, Ubel. Yeah. It's looking real good for oh, okay the, the smash clash. ultimate <laughs> smash ultimate <laughs> what, what a perfectly hey but i like that reaction from jackal you see the button come out and you're like all right i'm gonna throw out one of my quickest options it'll either trade uh, or in that case clash and yeah you get away with so much of a you get out of a very da dangerous situation regardless though the charizard is out here and close to ledge but we're gonna skip ledge completely and land with that nair Jackal playing so, so measured and so, so patient is what you have to do when you see a Game & Watch just start doing this. <laughs> There's not much you can do about it sometimes. So there's plenty <laughs> you can do about that with a back air ready, able, and willing in the case of Charizard. Taking the first stock here is Jackal's Pokemon trainer, but he's not far behind him. Yeah, still, we're going to potentially switch back on over to Squirtle, but instead we're on Ivysaur, so we might as well try and get something started. We'll be Marcus still finding the grab into the Nair, and a couple of up airs here. This one's got to hurt. Good air dodge by Jackal, but instead, once again, we're going back to that boxing character. If we're able to get a trip, we're able to get a huge amount of damage, but it looks like Marcus is just not having it at all, so instead, we're going to try and get something started here. There's the down throw into the up special here, but now I, I feel like Jackal needs to start playing a little bit more aggressively here because I feel like the patience only works on the wolf right now. Yeah. Look, barely missed timing that jab lock and <laughs> wow, what a switch call out and covering so, so much. The Charizard online here will put out some good damage, but if you let Marcus come back onto stage here, like so, all right, you get a second chance at it, but I would be I would not be surprised to see Jackal switch back over to the Squirtle just in case of a danger scenario like this. Just grabbing Charizard straight away. Yeah, the wing also can hit from behind, but it doesn't here in that scenario. So instead, Marcus going to gladly take Charizard as all of this combo food right now. Going for the up smash, unable to find it. It will be a punish for Marcus with the down smash into the forward smash. And look at this. We are already now seeing Jackal above that 100% here. I've seen it possible, but you got to get this stock off. And Marcus, once more, playing so patiently, does not let you get so easily. Uh, they're landing. Oh, there's some good spacing on that forward air, though, as Marcus is very, very ready just to ride this one home with these safe reversals, these eject buttons to instantly shut down so much of what Jacko has been trying to do. Any landing aerials, any jumps in that dangerous situation. The landing backer, though, not sure if the chef was intended. However, you got it. Yeah. 
Stock was certainly taken. Maybe we can see one more from this Charizard. You're not afraid of grabs from Game & Watch at these percents. No, definitely not here. Trying to land with the Nair, unable to find much here. Trying to poke with the up tilt. I wanted to see a grab there so bad, Ubal. I want to see grabs right now from Zard. I want to see a down throw into a Nair something. But you could tell Jackal being so careful. I mean, Charizard can absolutely get it done, but we have to find our moment. And sometimes that's a little bit more difficult when all these hitboxes and these safe hitboxes are being kind of thrown out all at the same time. So now it's all Marcus giving Jackal the chair. Going to be able to air dodge. We're not even going to go high. We have to just try and attempt it. All right, Jackal laughing. We're, oh, let's go to Wolf. Anyway. <laughs> that's, a, that's a tough one, though. Like, just... It, playing it pretty well in the long, long end game that we just saw here, Lyric. But it's kind of what you have to do against Game & Watch. He's not known for his, like, insanely fast approach game and blowing you up with a easily, uh, easily usable aerial that'll just destroy you at any range on stage. Instead, it's you just play it slow, watch Game & Watch do all of his Game & Watch things, and try to find that opening and see what Marcus gives you. We are sticking on the Pokemon Trainer here, though, Lyric. We'll see if it holds through. Oh, very fortunate to be knocked back towards stage. There is Dude, uh, a Jackal. Please, please just take me. Please, bro. <laughs> oh, oh, the two no. frame. No. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, no. Oh, God. Let him. <laughs> Dude, back. no. Please make it now. <laughs> no, you're not making back from that. Oh, no. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> yeah. Does that does that kind of entice the womp womp? Well, yeah, I, I, I feel a womp womp coming on. Not gonna lie. All right. Well, Marcus, um, as AG said at failsafe, uh, has gotten the locked in syndrome now and definitely is playing like it. Right. It yeah. Definitely has these tight combos here. But now Jackal trying to fight his way back into this match. Um, and Marcus, now that you're in the driver's seat, you can just kind of kind of dictate when you want to go in or not. Still, though, switching on over to Zard, and we'll be able to call out the jump with the Vine Whip. And now it's all Jackal here. How do we get started? Oh, Going off stage without your jump? Maybe not be the great one, but thankfully Vine Whip's able to get back to ledge with no problems. But, oh, wait, hello. Oh, Vine okay. Whip? One more? <laughs> oh, no. Going back to ledge, playing it safe, because you know that Marcus respects Vine Whip after getting a first stock with it. Landing on the platform there. Certainly oh. awkward there on the part of Jackal, but... Man, we're just able to bob and weave around so many of these edge guard attempts to the fa to the point where they are sending Jackal back on stage. Okay, will hit the back air into the vine whip. It's not enough, but Jackal has certainly brought this back extremely well. There was a really great air dodge um, on this side of the stage that Jackal hit that was super sweet. That I wanted to call out a little bit earlier, but it is going to be Marcus once more hitting the up air into the up special here. Good roll through, but Marcus ready for it. Finds the back throw, and now it's all Jackal. As he has to bring this back, gonna stick it on the Zard, at least for the moment here. Reads the air dodge in. It's not enough, though, so we need to get something started. That's why Ivysaur is here, throwing out the down air, but just a little bit early. The PT special here is now your Ivysaur. You're gonna get kind of clocked up just a little bit, already taking 26%. Oh, okay. The jump into the fast fall, getting right next to Marcus in that case. Oh, okay. I thought it was, bro. Uh, yeah, I, I reacted. I, I heard it. <laughs> I do want to see uh, Jackal start to integrate some more forward air like that yeah. in this matchup. Forward air, a little bit of a bigger button than a back air, and a little bit more u easily usable in rising situations where Jackal is, uh, uh, Marcus rather, is spending a lot of time throwing out these rising back airs and rising forward airs. You have to find some way to contest that. Ooh, okay, good roll through through the chair here. Finds the nair. We have to get the stock now. If, if we're Jackal right, we have enough rage. Ooh. And there it is, the Vine Whip. It is going to be enough with Game & Watch being so light. Jackal, Pokemon Trainer, getting on the board here after that, what literally was just an unfortunate first stock. Jackal taking a deep breath, recognizing that it is possible here. But my goodness, it really came down to this, how patient Jackal was the second stock, which is why the patience play style does work on Jackal. But Marcus just unfortunately slipping right at the end after amassing such a big lead. Yeah, certainly tough to watch in motion, just your lead slowly and steadily slip away, but tunneling in on the Ivysaur and the Squirtle at low, at the Squirtle at super low percents and the Ivysaur basically at all other times, 
it's common commonly said among like PT players where Ivysaur is the weakest of the three Pokemon. But when man, when Ivysaur is successful in a matchup or uh, favored in any sort of way, they are so so potent. <laughs> Got the short little guys fighting it out there. Up special is going to throw Jackal off the momentum, at least for the moment here. And now Squirtle has amassed a ton of damage right now. Waiting for the switch on over to Ivy, but just not yet here. Okay, shields through, unable to find anything, but there's the F-Tilt. Switching on over to Ivysaur here, using the tether cancel. But there it is. I mean, Chef into, into confirm. It's always what's going to be what's looking good. Lingering projectile confirm on ledge there. So, so powerful in Game & Watch. Having so many ways to eliminate stocks, and that is certainly one of the uh, more risky ones, to say the least. But hey, Marcus always seems to find one per bracket. There it is. There it is. Right in grands, too. Yeah. It's right when you need it, right? But still, now Jackal, I mean, definitely not out of this. We've seen Jackal come back from uh, worse at times. But uh, to do this all with one Pokemon trainer stock, you essentially have to play perfect, right? You have to get this stock off by catching a jump from Marcus here, but you can tell Marcus already going all the way out there. It's possible if we find a down air, but the down air, unfortunately, a little too early, so we're gonna thread the needle with the up air here. Hasn't taken too much damage on the stock, but you can't let one of these combos happen. Luckily, you're only taking 25, and in turn, you're given 18 back. A good DI on the part of Marcus to head down towards oh. the stage. Not getting buried in a clean tether cancel on the part of Jacqueline there to get out of such a precarious spot. Trying to put the screws onto Marcus here, but oh, off stage like this. Oh, yeah, we gotta go high. <laughs> yeah, we are I getting out of there. I like, I like how Jackal's like, yeah, okay, Zart. Um, I know a lot of other PT players would probably stick on Zart at this point just for maximum durability, but unable to grab the ledge off of the Flare Blitz. It's gonna be big. Uh, Marcus, though, going to live it out a little early on the recovery from Jackal here. And the back air, not going to be enough, but honestly, if we're able to hold on to this 145, we can get something started here, trying to give him the chair. It's the Battle of the Tilts, Ubel. Forward tilt for forward tilt, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we make it to game number four with Marcus going 2-1. You know what? When you get a nine like that and eliminate a stock so spontaneously, especially after just taking one, uh, it's hard to come back from that one. I'm interested to see if Jack was going to be like, yeah, we could stick this out. Uh, I was about yeah. to say, stick it out on Pokemon right Trainer. Out. I definitely don't think it's a bad idea, right? We have a whole second uh, set to play with here, but yeah. Game & Watch hits that. You should always expect it from Game & Watch. Let's see how this one's gonna go though. Pokemon Stadium 2 is going to be the choice. I'm really surprised that Jackal hasn't tried to like take Marcus to a small battlefield too, yeah. just because uh, you know Pokemon Trainer is like that boxing character. We wanna get our hits in with Squirtle and then kind of seamlessly transition to Ivysaur. But once again, I just feel like this is a super comfortable stage for Marcus. And now Marcus with a massive, massive percentage in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> the collective laugh down in the crowd as we're watching Marcus just so, so divisively edge guard this character. I would almost like to see a, I would like to see a state, uh, seen a stage swap, especially if this game ha keeps going the way that it uh, is currently. Um, but something like an FB could have changed a lot when it comes to making Marcus do something that you want him to do and engage in different ways. But hey, the Squirtle comes through clutch on Pokemon Stadium. And when it comes in the realm of competition, comfort typically bests everything on paper. I feel like sometimes I count out a Jackal stock a little bit early, but then I have to remember that while Jackal is playing Pokemon Trainer, Marcus is playing a very light character, right? So some of these Squirtle options, some of these smash attacks will KO very, very early here. So now it's all up to Marcus Whoa. here to close this out. But Jackal now going to get caught up a little bit into the jab. And all of this damage that he's taking is not going to help him at all. Now, granted, if we're switching on over to the Charizard, it could be a different story here. But Ivysaur with a little bit of rage definitely is not a bad option right now. The down tilt is going to beat out the up smash charge up. And I really like how... Jackal is sticking on this Pokemon. He's never choosing it. He's never choosing the Pokemon to stay on based on weight. He's choosing yeah. based on matchup and situation. And consistently, Ivysaur has been the Pokemon that has gotten him the most success. Switching over to the Charizard to survive there, though. And at 133, you're sticking with this Zard for the remainder of the stock. And maybe even able to find something surviving that weak hit of forward tilt and getting back to center in just the nick of time, even evading the grab. Oh, no. The... Forward air actually going to beat it out from 
from Marcus here. I really wanted to see a uh, grab at that point, right? Uh, up throw onto platform definitely would have taken that stock here. But now we are back onto the Ivy Sword. The back throw, no pummel is not going to be enough. Another one of those will definitely take it. But we're trying to line up for this down air. We're unable to find it here. Going for the Tri State Twister, but instead it will be the uh, <laughs> the jab for Marcus here. Forward air not going to be enough. So once more, we need to find a way to win in neutral here. Still, though, trying to find it. There's the Nair. And now it's just Jekyll jumping away. But now has to find an opening. And it's so difficult to ask for, man. It gets harder and harder with all, as much of this percent climbs. You even have uh, kill, throws that take stocks on Ivy Sword now with something like a down throw. Oh, there it is, forty-two percent. Found it. <laughs> and you, hey, and you get to stay on the Pokemon that you are seeing the most success with as well. No need to s rotate through all three Mons. Instead, you get that Nair out of shield. You get something big, and the ability to box out Game and Watch literally can never be understated. And just just how important that is. Still, though, it's now up to this Ivy Sword to keep this set specifically alive here. I'm sure, it wouldn't be a problem if we went on over to set two, but it's looking so close. And Jackal has done a fantastic job of evening it back up. And look at this the dash out, dash in, the Vine Whip. Not going to be enough, but honestly, we're getting into that scary point where Ooh. Up Air is going to be taking it. We're going to game five, set one. Jackal, the Pokemon trainer, come you know to play. It's, it's starting to work. <laughs> Jackal taking the deepest breath. He's, he's managing through it. And Marcus has no <laughs> the, the venue just went yay. Did you hear that? <laughs> hip, 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 a, a very sad yay. It was like <laughs> yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, man. It's, it's this is funny. All right. Game number five, Ubel. It's looking good here, though, from Jackal. And it's always nice to see Jackal settle on a secondary. He knows he needs one for this Wolf. Wolf is not solo viable in this meta where you have Steve's running rampant. Why not? Yeah, that match was minus three. <laughs> minus three? Yeah, it's bad. I, geez. <laughs> minus three is yeah. crazy. All right, it's probably not minus three. But it's like one of, if not, game of uh, Wolf's worst matchups, uh, period. So... Having a secondary that can do well into characters like that or some other awkward matchups that uh, Jackal doesn't want to deal with, i.e. characters like Donkey Kong, might be worth having. And hey, this uh, PT is not only a solid character, period, but also generally low maintenance. You just play to your fundies, and Jackal certainly got those. Yeah, absolutely. But now, Marcus, wants, if it's one consistent theme that I have seen out from Marcus this set, that he always takes a very decisive leap forward at the start of a match. But now it's all Jackal here on this Ivysaur edge guard, trying to read the jump, had the right idea, but instead we're gonna get the grab going for the Vine Whip here, but it's getting a little bit tight into the scramble here. So we have to kind of go out and find another way around it. Zard is here. We're going to be able to find the Flare Brit, the Flare Brits, the Flare Blitz. Hey, there it Shout is again. Shout out to the UK viewers. <laughs> I got y'all, I got y'all. Still though, good, good air dodge from Jackal. And honestly, this Zard at 152 is very, very dangerous, which is why Jackal's trying to keep it around because honestly, a back air could do it. All these hopscotches, man. <laughs> They're just bouncing off Game & Watch Up B of all things. And hey, it's a way to get out of a very precarious spot. Up smash. Oh, yeah. That's oh. a lot of rage. Are you kidding me? You see that second hit of Game & Watch down air on shield. You know you can let your um, typical out of shield options rip. And for Charizard, Please. that up smash is real good. As well as that up B getting back. What an auto cancel window by Marcus. But Charizard's weight combined with zero rage. You are surviving. 212. 218. Can we get much higher? Yes. yes. <laughs> 232 <laughs> here. What's the longest uh, stock that we've seen in tournament ever? Uh, I, <laughs> 235? I mean, 235 might be it. Uh, Can we get further? Longest one that I've ooh, seen. Jackal. Okay. Jackal. Oh. Okay. <laughs> that was so mean. That was, that was so, so necessary. <laughs> Marcus would do that. Oh, if yeah. He, everyone's like, oh, I love Gons. He's great. I'm like, mm. Mm, no, Marcus. <laughs> he would do that. Come from on, his, you. From his play style to his character to his goals <laughs> in game, Marcus is weaponized disrespect. It's just so true. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Much love, Marcus, if you're watching oh, this yeah. <laughs> Easily. Like, Marcus is one of my favorite people. He, he, plays, so he plays to win, but oh, he knows what he's doing to you. <laughs> absolutely. Still, though, back on Ivy Sword. Yes. <laughs> We're having some fun here at Fusion 190. Uh, back on the Ivy Sword here, Marcus, once again, trying to approach with these forward airs, uh, but Jacko really kind of spacing around more. You were talking about that forward air. We wanted to see mm -hmm. space forward air from Jacko a little bit more, and that's what we're getting now. Okay, that was the weirdest hitbox on backer I've seen. 
but get smash ultimate down throws the option fine whip not going to be enough but i mean it was almost there yeah and oh. hey and all of that is such good damage if you're trying to take this stock with something like an up air at these percentages and we're hunting for it that's for sure any one of these jumps could just potentially spell the demise for marcus roll back onto stage with a jab grab very nice from marcus trying to find this edge guard <laughs> oh and does Ew. with the up B and the air dodge back hey you got an invincible reversal. Might as well use it offensively just as much as defensively. Down smash, down smash. But that was gross. I hated him. that. I hated that conversion. Even watch. All right. Still, the, the will it be? Oh, well, I, I really wanted it to be at that moment. I was like, really? <laughs> it's a pretty niche confirmed. Yeah. Squirtle up tilt's not the most generous of hitboxes, but hey, it still combo in Game & Watch at 115 is pretty good. <gasps> no way. Yeah. Why do the apps always come in? Happy juice. <laughs> <laughs> it's late. <laughs> Jack will try to read where Marcus is going to go, but if it's one thing that we've seen from Marcus, his escout escape routes have been fantastic all night. Hey, we're... What? Oh, no. All right, you got it. All right, we're waiting until 170, I guess. We want to make a, sure it happens. Try to get maybe the mix up there, but dash attack. This is going... This is a very decisive moment here. I mean, we, we know this. Anybody with eyes can see that Jackal needs the stock right now, but you cannot take this much damage onto a onto a fresh stock here forward air though is going to take it so it's 51 and like you said earlier this is where jackal kind of wants to be with ivysaur as kind of the the front here but look at how careful he's playing because he recognizes the position he's in if he loses this game it is going to another set and i'm sure wolf o'donnell is waiting to get his time in it will just be the back here let's see if we can oh, oh. no and we're going slightly above the dash stack, avoiding the two frame, avoiding the collision. And I mean, we're on this Charizard until the end of the game now. There's no switching unless you're in a really, really desperate scenario. Hit the Flare Blitz, Jackal. Do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> Finish Imagine. Him. Yo, come on, Jackal. I know Jackal oh, he's, can do he's, it, bro. He's, he's raw like that. Come on, Jackal. Hey, back throw? Oh, <laughs> no. We're do setting it, it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's the plot armor. Uh, oh I, my god! I want to be. I want to be up B. Joel up B's there. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Forward. Oh no! F2. Two frames. Oh my god! We're getting it's so close. precarious. <gasps> he did an up smash. Wow. The up two? No way! Oh my god! Is he gonna go off there? Yo, uh, uh, the commentary is over. <laughs> I'm so scared. I want to see. Oh, oh no! the roll on as Jackal scouting no. everything but that with the rising fair and the f into auto cancel, auto cancel landing forward tilt. Have so little lag, you cover jump and neutral getup, but the slow Gons. roll. It's gone. I, I mentioned it. What did I mention? I mentioned it in the first set. Yeah. Game and watches. Some of Game and Watch's animations are just a little bit slower and a little bit more stilted compared to the rest of the cast because he's literally 2D. Dude, he almost won. And that this roll. And this roll, man. He almost did. Did he stick the PT or did he go wolf? No, he went wolf. Bro. Oh yeah, it's wolf. Yeah. I didn't hear oh, it. Oh come on, let's let's be he, honest. He is bro. trying. He, he's the, he's the competitor. He's the Jersey competitor, and you know what? He's trying the to Jersey win. Jersey competitor. It sounds like a sub. He's a it competitor. Sounds like you competitor. go into your deli on Saturday morning. You're like, can I get the Jersey? What's competitor? on the Jersey competitor? Ooh, um, <laughs> the first thing in my mind said cheese. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would hope so. It's a sub. <laughs> And let us know what you got yeah. on your side. I'm feeling. Side. I'm feeling. It's like a mortadella, okay. like Italian. If type. I can, if I can get on my. I grew up in New York soapbox real quick. Uh, I was at home visiting family last weekend. I went to my deli, and let me tell you what I get on my uh, on my roll. Okay. Hit me. I get a chicken cutlet with Yummy. provolone cheese, Ooh. a lettuce, tomato, bacon, um, hot sauce, and honey mustard, and it's so good. Just trust. Wait, that sounds kind of. Shout fire. out to Rocky's Deli in Mid Millwood. That's the place to go. It's 24/7 as all deli should be. Uh, anyway, back to the match. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, let me get off my soapbox. About now I'm <laughs> hungry. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> all right, game number one, set number two. Uh, Wolf is out to play here. Um, you can tell Jackal a little bit more comfortable just by the way he's moving here, trying to line up for the back air. We'll be able to find it, but won't be able to find the stock. The punish, though, onto the down air will be the up smash here, and Jackal going to lead. While you can see shades of, as you mentioned earlier, uh, sh there's shades of Jackal's playstyle in both characters, but there's something different about playing a character for five years compared yeah. to playing a character for two months. Yeah. Like, if if that. Like, there's so much mastery and awareness and just subconscious going into what Jackal uh, is doing around Game & Watch. He doesn't need to know what he's doing. His hands are already doing it. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of just like second nature, right? Yeah. And 
like for a lot of people that don't play too many like platform fighting games, it's like trying to play your main in a different platform fighter and then like you try and just do the things that your hands are very used to doing here. Yeah. 120 though on Jackal and now Mark is about to touch this 100% mark. He's getting the really dangerous part, but Jackal the Nair into the Wolf Flash confirm as you know, True as day at yeah. this point. So nice, dude. The rising air dodge to evade the down air into fastball nair and then converting into stock. Like, just beautifully played. And finally, Jackal not scrambling or, or trying to play through these, like, awkward spaghetti situations for a lead. He just is firm, firm control of this game and letting Marcus deal with his superior range on the part of these forward airs and these back airs. Yeah, things are looking good now, but still Marcus able to find a couple of nares to go with. Unfortunately, going to with the grab. So now Jackal once more going to get tossed up here. Oh, okay. Sure. I want five is better than none. Yeah, especially he's been getting a lot of threes this bracket, which is not typically what you want to see. Not Ooh. that. Oh my God, getting yeah, super. That, that was a raw dash yeah, attack. Too. Super late hit of dash attack, sending straight out. I've always said that the sound designer of this game did so well with it because sometimes you feel it. Another wolf flash? All right. Trade chill. confirms. Chill, I'm, I'm, it's over. That's crazy. <laughs> Jill, Jude, come on, bro. Chill. <laughs> yeah. chill. You, you changed that. You better, you better put up Jackal right now, Calvin. <laughs> Jude. Like, Jude. <laughs> bro, he's Look nice with it. He's nice. He just, you know what? Just do it. <laughs> the Nike. I've, I've been playing. It kind of makes the check mark. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Yo, uh, merch designers, bro. Wolf Flash and say, just do it. You're welcome. Trademark it. Let me know. Gotcha. I'll take five. I'll take five dollars of each sale. Thank you very much. Uh, game number two here. Uh, we're still in Pokemon Stadium too. Uh, still the same matchup here, and now it's all Marcus at, once again at the start of the game. Marcus has always gone in these really great opening combos, but then Jackal always seems to just be like, you know what? If you want to drive, bet I'm gonna just wait for you to now react oh trying for the forwarder there maybe reading a spot dodge did not find the hit though in this game let's see if we oh the roll on getting scouted by marcus was so so nice yet having that wolf flash and just in general super mo uh, heavy mobility has been uh, such a boon for jackal here in the in this set too Oh, no yeah. Dice. yeah, sometimes the neutral between both these players kind of makes me like a little anxious, right? Because yeah. it's like, go either way. But now Jackal has a lot of rage to work with here. And now Marcus is actually the one who's struggling to land at this point when it was a little bit about the opposite earlier. There's a forward throw. Good grab here. And there is the F tilt coming out from Jackal, able to use the rage in his advantage and get a very early cheeky stop. You know what that was, Eric? That was... What, what was it? It was... Benefiting on the fruits of your own conditioning. Like sure. Many times over, even in that first game, Marcus was getting punished for doing these raw down airs and landing on stage in the typical game and watch way. The fact that the fact that Jackal has allowed him uh, has forced Marcus into second guessing how he's playing disadvantage as game and watch is just beautiful levels of mental play and being one step ahead in a way that you can actually punish. Yo, sometimes just Jude turns on the switch and yeah, is like, just, bet, I, I have these combos labbed out forever. I love the way that he's constantly dashing back to you and then throwing out the one aerial. And once again, Wolf has all these safe aerial approaches here and then recognize, you know what, it's not my turn, bet, I'll back up, I'll throw out the F-Tilt, but I'm also way far ahead at this point. I could just wait for you to swing first. And honestly, this is one of the first times I'm really seeing Marcus get a little bit more impatient here and not waiting for his turn. Yeah, sometimes you can take your turn back artificially as Game & Watch, given his uh, plethora of insane moves. Bump. And that's certainly one of them to do it, catching the down smash on that neutral getup. Not sure if Mark, uh, Jackal was trying to pull up shield or not, but you can still play to your lead here unless you're risking a dash attack oh, like that. That, that, that air dodge was actually really, like, unsafe. Like, really that, unsafe, yeah. It was unsafe, <laughs> and I was worried that Marcus was going to turn around, grab, throw, nine hammer, you know what I'm saying? But you know? here we go. There's a the forward throw. Marcus, good air dodge through uh, the dash attack there because, honestly, another one of those could definitely lead into this game number two. Going for <laughs> going for the hammer. I like how, like you said, Marcus always gets one. Uh, I would like to see two. At least that would be kind of funny here. But once again, Jackal now going to get the reversal and jumping away here. A, a dash attack can certainly do it at this yeah. point, Ubel. We are hunting for hey. early dash attack in <laughs> specific. It. And you know what? Dude. Dude. Thank you, Kelvin. <laughs> 
It's hard. It's hard to play around all of these uh, just raw kill options that some characters has as Game & Watch. Like, it's his biggest flaw, where you don't have something that you can that has a ton of knockback growth and easily can kill at any percent just on a dime. Typically, you do have to throw out a smash attack or throw out a down smash, which are spammable, but not always approach. You don't always approach with those right. and it's any sort of safe. Meanwhile, Jackal can throw out some of these dash attacks, these back airs, uh, forward tilts even, and play to the strengths of his character. He gets the trip with the down tilt in order to set up for a massive combo there as well. I mean, some, sometimes you get that nice chance and you can instantly take it for 64%. Yeah, now Jackal recognizing that the opportunity is not there right now, so instead, he's just waiting underneath the platform. Now, this is the patient Marcus that we've seen a little bit before. Yeah. Uh, once again, sometimes when you're losing, you kind of like feel the pressure to start hitting your opponent, but uh, that's kind of what Jackal wants, right? I feel like Jackal is one of those players where he's not going to really lose to you like boxing on top of him because Wolf has so many buttons to just kind of force himself out of it, right? There it is though, Wolf Flash, not going to be enough. It's not going to spike and we know that's what Jackal was going for. Landing Nair into the up air, into the up special here. Going to grab Jackal once more. Wolf Flash early landing on stage two. So that's going to allow for another option. Option, but Jackal going to find the landing there into the dash attack. Jackal going up three stops to two. Yeah, the slow fall there from Marcus is not going to give him any sort of uh, any sort of advantage in that stock. Oh, going for the shine combo as well. Forward air into the shine, but nothing afterwards. So let's see if Marcus is able to find the stock. No. And instantaneously, Jackal is back on the ground. The benefits of being a fast faller, any sort of these juggle attempts can be instantly diffused just by holding down at the right moment. 127 is the percentage, and it might take a little bit for Marcus to close out this stock if Jackal plays his cards right. And when you have a lead like this, Lyric, you never have to put yourself into any sort of risk. No, absolutely. And especially versus a character like Game & Watch, where we've seen time and time again this tournament, how light he is and how rage can really work in your favor. Jackal does not need to go for anything crazy. Unfortunately, though, for Jackal going to fall out of the up smash, had the right idea, but the opportunity not too far gone as he's going to be able to link that Nair into another one. Jackal up three socks to one. Things are looking real good for this wolf. Yeah, the, the shift over to the character you've been playing for so long tends to, you know, be a beneficiary, especially given Jackal's track record with this wolf across multiple years of this game. A legacy competitor, though he is dropping the stock there, and you never know when it comes to this game and watch one Nair. If you're able to fill that bucket as well, three hits of wolf la uh, Wolf's laser can certainly spell the demise for Jackal in the wrong spot. Man, but look at Jackal, so nice. careful. There's the nine, but it's not going to be enough. Hey, I said I wanted another one. Yeah, I got one. You got one. Oh, okay, the air dodge, but the hammers don't actually ground here. No punish also onto the wolf dash attack. That's a little unfortunate as Jackal now going to be able to hit the F tilt. Looking for a way to punish Marcus here. Another landing dare that is punished with the up smash here. Good grab by Marcus. You need the stock. Here we go, though. I don't believe we have a jump. Oh, just kidding, we do. And now it's down into this last edge guard scenario. Oh, we're catching landings really well here as Marcus and finding the two frame as well. The jump is burned, but able to make it back. Such a good angle there from Jackal. Yet we're keeping him in disadvantage. Marcus doing such a good job of holding center and finding the grab. So safe is that forward air. Forward tilt. Oh, the whole the DI up from Jackal. So many Jackal. unfortunate things. He's getting out of so much danger so quickly and still holding onto this stock at 156, putting Game & Watch in the worst possible scenario. So Marcus letting it rip with the down air, and that is going to be one of the most consistent punishes that you can take. You see the down air on your block as Wolf, up smash out of shield is a true punish every single time, and Jackal's never gonna miss that. I feel like Marcus was hitting a lot of those down airs just on like frustration, right? right. Like if you get it punished once, you're going to get it punished again because your opponent is expecting it. Uh, but good showing, of course, like you said, Jackal, Marcus now kind of the new fusion standard. The Pokemon trainer, Definitely a very nice welcome surprise here from Jackal. I'd love to see him expand on that for maybe Collision coming up. Not sure if Jackal is going to be going out to Genesis next month, but like you said, having a good secondary that you can hang out with is a nice touch, but 235, my goodness. And he didn't even he die didn't. to anything that Marcus did. I mean, he did, right? But well, yeah, it, it, he was it was only, an accident. Yeah, he was only in that situation because he 
effectively SD. He, he oopsied. Yeah, he did a oopsies. Yeah, yeah that was gross. I was like, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> see, Jude couldn't even. Jude was like, no way. <laughs> the, what could have been the ending of the tournament that here? Been really? Well, let me see what happened here. He, oh. He rolled and I wanted to wanted see to uh, yeah. Jude pull the Charizard thing from the platform and come down with landing yeah. forward air. That actually would have covered enough space for uh, it to be over. But That's definitely something that. Uh, he could pick up from Beast with this Charizard because the Charizard yeah. did look like it needed a lot of work. Your Zard needs sauce, everybody. Yeah. In order to play this character, your your Zard needs a little bit of like sauce, a little seasoning. Charizard's on it. the X factor. Squirtle and Ivysaur are consistent. Charizard's that wild card that can win games for you or lose games for you sometimes. Well, it is going to be the Wolf of Donald that does come out tried and true, looking comfortable on it, and that is going to be that 3-0 for Jackal here at Fusion 190. Your champion once more. Guys had a good weekend so far, so we'll see if we can carry that over into now. I guess the second month of the season here is, you know, can you believe it? January's oh my God. already over. Yeah, we're encroaching into Genesis territory. We're <laughs> encroaching into King Kong as well, and, coming up in France. Collision will be here before uh, yeah. you know it. Second weekend of March. It is. We're in that time of year where we're getting not swamped with majors, but each one hits with insane amount of weight. Absolutely. The beginning of the year for Smash is always such a tight, intense time. Uh, LMBM starts it, like, very beautifully. Yes. And then, it, like, that momentum always carries over into the following tournaments after. So, I am super happy that I was here tonight. Uh, big thank yep. you to uh, CS for having me. Big thank you to you for being an amazing co-caster. Shout out to Kelvin downstairs. I believe oh, we are going okay. to run through ads one more time before we say goodbye. No, nope. we're out. All right, we're take gone. us out. Yeah, uh, that is going to be it here for Fusion 190. Encroaching ever so closer to Fusion 200. Going to happen in a couple months. You're going to want to stay tuned for that because uh, the hun the century mark is always a big one. Uh, I've been Ubel, joined by my lovely co-caster, Lear. You can find her right through there. You can find me right to there as well on our Twitter.coms. Uh, and with that, we'll see you next Monday for more Smash Ultimate action.